Okay, I finally got around to making this video and I've over I've basically I've recorded what I've done in a normal analysis and then I've added some comments as I go along. It's it's a bit weird <laughs> to listen to myself uh, talking about this, but um, I think I've gone over to all the main points. So how about uh, if there's any comments, uh, just let me know, and uh, we can go back over some of the details. But um, otherwise, uh, when I get into the analysis here, uh, some of the details uh, I'll, I'll talk about it in some more detail. Anyway, that's it. I'll, I'll you'll hear me more in a second. Bye. So the shot I'm going to look at is from Jewe's paper, and this is um, the RID or the SRF for that shot. So on ASBO 1, the etalons are 10A and 15C, ASBO 2, 2A and 5A. And we can see the trim fiber delay is 3.13 nanoseconds in both cameras. And so we can go to the uh, Excel file to look at the uh, actual thickness of the ethylon. So when it says 10A plus 15A, that's just a nominal uh, description of the ethylons. To get the actual thickness we put into the Igor program, we need to go to the Excel file. So here I'm just loading the images themselves so LLE raw HDF start with ASBO 1 so the first thing to do is to calibrate the time axis so I want to grab uh, the combs I'll try and get an even number of combs then say set with two in, on the trackpad you press down two buttons and say set time fiducial region the normalized time scale and then we want to find out the pixel value for the first blip so control or command i opens up the, this cursor and here it's i can't read it but it's 200 and something i think so that is entered into the pixel box now the t now the time offset is at zero at the moment, so that pixel now is set at zero. But we know the trim fiber delay is 3.13 nanoseconds. But then we have to add to that 3.13 nanoseconds the offset from the Excel spreadsheet, which is written in the Excel spreadsheet. So each camera has its own uh, extra delay associated with the first pixel, which has been calibrated. So, for example, on as you can see here in Visor 1, it's plus 380 picoseconds. Visor 2 is plus, three, plus 50 picoseconds. So for Visor 1, which we're looking at now, we have to go 3.13 nanoseconds plus 380 picoseconds and enter that value in. That will give us a, an absolute calibrated time scale relative to T0, where T0 was where the laser turns on. Next thing to do is to grab the region of interest, the established region of interest for the, um, the visor analysis. So set phase on wrap region. And then I want to set a region at the beginning of this uh, initial region of interest, which is where we're going to say the zero phase uh, or the zero, yeah, zero phase will be established. So when you do the analysis, it'll give you a line out uh, in, uh, in terms of fringe movement and, in, uh, and also in velocity. But you want to set the first region of that to zero velocity, zero phase. So I'm just establishing what's the region of interest of that um, phase. And that's the blue lines there. Now we need to enter in the etalon. So you see here I've chosen visor wavelength 532. This is one of Jouet's shots. So it's a molly lift, lift window. So I've chosen lift. That will affect the, um, the velocity per fringe sensitivity. Now I said it was 10A and 15A, I believe. 
or 10A and 15C, and you can see here what the uh, thickness of the etalon, that combination of etalons is. So I have to add that thickness into the etalon value here. And underneath, once I, that's entered in, underneath it shows the VPF for the lithium fluoride window. So now I'm ready to analyze phase. And so I press analyze phase, it generates a Fourier analysis uh, and uh, over that region of interest. Now I want to set the cursors, set the range of uh, analysis over the main peak. So I set, put the, move the cursors, say get cursor, reanalyze phase. If I say set uh, image scale, it opens up um, what the phase looks like and there's other windows there looking with, which are other outputs of the visor analysis. And now I want to add a breakout because there's clearly a breakout there, a shock breakout. And so I need to establish in the program where that breakout occurs in time. So I just do uh, establish that as shown. So I just do it by eye. Yeah, that's usually sufficient to say where the breakout is. And you can see with the initial analysis, there's a lot of structure there, which is not real. So the visor analysis did not quite smoothly capture the fringe movement in space. So there's this uh, hat Y series, which I'm toggling down. And basically just keep playing with that until it, uh, it steps through and closes those gaps and gets a more uniform phase map. Now I'm saying kill graphs, so I'm going to do the same analysis on the reference image for that shot. And so analyze visor, so it remembers all the settings from the previous uh, analysis on the main image. And you can see here there's a tilt on the fringes, a little bit of a tilt. It's actually more apparent than visor too. But I analyze that, set zero phase, re-zero phase, so that sets everything to zero, uh, the, the phase initially to zero. I open up the main data image again, and I set the reference to the same number of the shot. Then I normalize to reference. So I've subtracted the face from the reference image from the data image. And now I'm doing a line out of through the, um, the face. And this actually is, because it's taking into account the velocity per fringe, this is actually a velocity and not a phase. So it's the phase multiplied by the, uh, the VPF of the etalons or the vacuum or the fringe sensitivity of the etalons and taking into account the lithium fluoride window. So clearly this needs, we need to add fringe shifts here because most of the velocity is negative. And I'm just putting the axis here. I put down aluminum lithium fluoride incorrectly. It's actually moly lithium fluoride, but that doesn't make a difference, but I correct that later. So you can see here the velocity is zero and then we get a jump at about five nanoseconds or four and a half nanoseconds. Then we're going for negative velocity. So we need to add a fringe jump. So I put in the multiplier there for one, add fringe after breakout, and then just update that graph. So it still need to add more to make it realistic, the velocity. And updating again. And so that's a reasonable, it could be correct. So we're going to save that uh, line out into the data folder of that particular image. So we go to set folder to image, and then that will put uh, active, it will set active the data folder for that particular shot. So put the cursor on the profile, then command seven opens up this dialog box and I just save the name visor one the shot name underscore line out and I usually put uh, underscore s zero for shock zero or shock one or shock two etc when I'm adding in successive number of shots so now I just add in another one save that as shots or s underscore s one or S2, actually, in this case.
And now I just have to repeat the same process for Visor 2. And again, we have to just, um, for Visor 2 has a different time calibration. So we have to reestablish, when you open, every time you open up a new image, load a new image, it, it remembers the settings from the previous analysis of the previous image. So if you're doing, um, it's better to do like all Visor 1 together, for example, then all Visor 2, because then the image, the, the regions of interest are common usually for uh, successive uh, shots in Visor 1, uh, if you do all Visor 1 together. But now I have, to, I didn't do that here, so I have to reestablish um, the time, uh, set time fiducial region for Visor 2 in the same fashion that I did for the Visor 1. And also I want to, I have to re uh, reset the, um, the phase region of interest and so on. So the offset is different in time here, plus 50 picoseconds. So we add that to the 3.13 nanoseconds, which is recorded for the trim fiber. So this should be 3.18 nanoseconds. So when you're setting that blue region of interest for the zero phase, um, the lowest value has to be within the, um, the X min of the main region of interest window, which is shown in the blue uh, region just above it um, on, the, on the main uh, visor uh, dialog uh, window. And so I have there, I think it's... Uh, 90 to 110 so if i put it at 89 for example i would get an error so i have to put it 90 is the x min so i need to do it uh, set it at 90 and then i usually add uh, like 20 pixels beyond that and so basically the program averages the velocity within that 90 to 110 and sets that at the zero so it offsets the, the velocity profile at the zero based on that and so of course we have a different etalon for visor 2 that's entered in there and the VPF is, um, I can't read it here, but five point something kilometers a second. So this is relatively insensitive, this VPF. So again, I need to do the hat series because there was a couple of um, regions which weren't captured by the program. Due to poor visibility, probably in the top of the window I selected. So I'm just adding the shock uh, breaker quite roughly. I don't think we need to be too precise. And again, going to the reference image, doing the region of interest in the reference image. Now this camera in Visor 2 is quite tilted. You can see that the fringes are sloped, uh, probably due to the CCD camera. Been not coupled very well to the street camera. But when we uh, normalize the reference, we get an absolute calibration or not calibration, but you, you compensate precisely for that uh, uh, non-ideal angle of the CCD camera. So the background is subtracted perfectly by doing that. So again, um, we're at negative velocity, so we need to add in uh, fringe jumps here. Now usually we have an idea what the fringe, what the velocity should be, so you don't have to keep going and definitely adding fringe jumps. But uh, for this shot, we knew it was about five kilometers a second based on the equation of state of, uh, of molybdenum and lithium fluoride. But uh, I adding it, I've chosen to add in an extra fringe jump here just to show um, that in some cases it's not so clear what the velocity is, so you might have to consider multiple fringe jumps.
Again, you put the you put one cursor on the profile, then Command Seven, that enables you to save it into the folder. And you say set folder to, to image. Okay, so now I'm plotting the line outs in a given folder versus the time, time axis. So what I'm doing now is just plotting the line outs for Visor One with the line outs for Visor Two, and then we can see which ones agree better so we can uh, establish which, which ones were um, what the correct velocity is by getting agreements between the two visors so that resolves the 2 pi ambiguity So there is a bit of a disagreement at late times, maybe from eight nanoseconds onwards, but I think that's due to uh, ghost fringes. So you get a reflection from the lithium fluoride window as well as the, the molly lift interface. So you get some disagreement later on, we'll talk about that later. But um, I think it's clear that we were expecting about five kilometers a second. And so I think it's clear that the, the, um, the agreement between the black and the red around five states that it's it is five rather than than four or six for example so that's basically it so exciting stuff so hopefully that was educational thanks bye